I'm sure many of us have played Caravan at some point in our Fallout New Vegas history. It's definitely fun when you figure out a winning strategy, but I think some people might be sleeping on just how good Caravan is. I think it's actually one of the best money making methods in the entire game. Now obviously when people think of making caps, the first thing to come to mind is probably gambling in the casinos. This is great for starter caps, but you can only earn a set amount of caps from each casino before being banned, so that means this method will eventually become useless into the late game. Another popular strategy is to farm the super mutants at Black Mountain for their high tier weapons like super sludges and incinerators. Then you can repair these with weapon repair kits or jury rigging and sell them at the Vendortron or other merchants for caps. This is also a good method, but you're limited by the number of caps each merchant has and it can honestly become boring to do this over and over again. Okay, but what about Caravan? The rules for Caravan are not clearly explained to the player, so I know it can take a little practice to figure it out, but once you do, it can become one of the best money making methods in the game. There are a total of 14 NPCs you can play Caravan with, all of them wager different amounts of caps and have different rules for how many times you can play against them. It's honestly a little bit sad that Caravan wasn't more integrated into the game, because I think it's pretty fun and fits the theme of New Vegas very well. I think Obsidian did actually have plans to make Caravan a more important part of the game, as there are NPCs who were coded to have Caravan decks, but were cut from the final game. Additionally, our lord and savior himself, Joshua Sawyer, who was the lead game director for Fallout New Vegas, said that he had bigger intentions for Caravan, but because the game was so rushed, they couldn't commit as much time to the minigame as they would have liked to. I mean, just imagine if Obsidian wasn't rushed making Fallout New Vegas, and they had enough time to fully develop Caravan. There could be cool rewards such as unique weapons or armors, or maybe special cards you could win from unique people. I think it could have been kinda similar to how Gwent was for The Witcher 3. Obviously Gwent is more advanced and has more detailed rules such as different decks and types of cards you can use, but look at how integral it became for that franchise. Everyone loved Gwent, including Geralt, and it was kind of funny that this professional monster hunter was a big nerd for a trading card game. It even has its own standalone game now that has become very popular as well. Now obviously I don't think Caravan would have had the same success as Gwent because it just uses a standard 52 playing card deck, but I think it could have had a lot more potential if it was given the proper time and attention. Anyways, sorry for that little tangent, I kind of just wanted to draw the parallels between Gwent and Caravan. Now I want to show you why I think Caravan is so good and the basic strategy you can use to consistently win. Okay, so now I'm going to show a practice game of Caravan against Nobark, so I can go over the consistent strategy of how to win. And Nobark is also a good person to play against in general because he has a decent amount of caps, and you can play against him an infinite number of times, unlike some other people. Now I also want to apologize in advance because I'm recording this live, so my microphone might pick up some of my mouse clicks and my keyboard, so I'll try to keep them as quiet as I can but I just figured this would be the easiest way to explain this. So I'm going to go ahead and start the game. So the first thing you'll see when you start a new game of Caravan is how much the person is willing to bet in the bottom left corner, so in this case 800 caps. Now they're always willing to bet more than whatever you see here, and you can figure that out by raising them. And as you play against people more you'll kind of know what their limits are. So for no bark you want to bet around 2000 caps, give or take. And we can see that he has now gone up to 1600. So I'm betting a little bit more than him, but that's okay because I'm confident that I'll win. So obviously every time you start a new game of Caravan, you want to make sure that you raise, that way you're getting the maximum amount of caps every time you play. So when that looks good, you can accept. And now it's going to bring us to our Caravan deck. So the best deck to consistently win is to combine as many 6s, 8s, 10s, jacks, and kings as possible. And I'll go over why that's the best once I start the game, because I think it's a little easier when you can visualize it. Now obviously when you first start out Fallout New Vegas, you're just going to have the basic caravan deck you get from Ringo, along with some other cards you may find early game. So in that case, you're just going to have to substitute with like 7s and 9s and whatever you have. And as you go through the game, then you can put back in the jacks and the 10s and whatever and build your perfect deck. Another thing to note is the minimum deck size in Caravan is 30 cards. As you can see right up here, if I remove this jack, we're now at 29 and it's grayed out so I can't play. So you have to have at least 30 cards, but I recommend not going above 30 either because the smaller your deck size is, the more consistent it is because it makes it more likely for you to draw the cards that you need at the right time. 
So no matter what cards you're using, try to limit it to 30 cards. So once that looks good, you can go ahead and play. So the objective of Caravan is to get two or three of your caravans to be between a value of 21 and 26, with 26 being ideal. So the higher the number, the better. And each row represents a caravan, both for me and my opponent. So for example, my caravan here is Dayglo, and no barks is Boneyard. So you immediately want to think, based on what your starting hand is, how can I get my value to be 26? Now another thing to note is kings will double the value of any card you play it on. You can play it for one of your cards or your opponent's cards, and a jack will remove the card you play it on. So this is good if your opponent already has a nice caravan and you want to sabotage it. Now the best strategy based on what we have here is you can play a 10, double it with a king, and then play a 6, and that'll put you at 26, or you could play an 8 double that with a king, which will put you at 16, and then you could play a 10 on there and that would be 26. Also, if you're getting unlucky with your kings, you could just play a 10, 8, and a 6, and that'd put you at 24, and then that could also win. Now, you can win by either having three caravans that are better than your opponents, if they're between 21 and 26, or you can just win by having the best two out of three. So, for example, let's say uh, no bark gets his boneyard caravan to be 25 but my other two caravans here are 26 that's considered three good caravans but since I have two that are better I would win so now I'm just gonna go over what my strategy would be to win this game so earlier no bark played a jack on my day glow caravan and now I have nothing so right now I'm not gonna focus on that I'm gonna go ahead and play this six on the hub and now that is 26 and I'm going to try to get rid of some of my jacks because right now I have no number cards. So I'm just going to remove what some of his high value cards are. And as you can see, he's doing the same thing to me. So that's all right. I'm just going to go ahead and do the same thing so I can get some more number cards. So I have a 10 again. So I'll go ahead and place that here. And I'm just going to ignore Shady Sands now because he has 26 there. So that's okay. I'm just going to let him have that. So I'm going to focus on my other two caravans because I can double my 10s to 20 and you can see that I have two 6s in my hand. So if everything goes according to plan, I can just play my two 6s here and as long as he doesn't do anything after this, I will win because I have two caravans at 26 and he has the third one and I have the best two out of three. And you can see that now I won, I got 1600 caps and I could play against him again if I wanted to. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention was that your caravans need to either be ascending in value, so like 6, 8, 10, or descending in value, so 10, 8, 6. And once you've chosen a style, you generally can't change it except for one exception, which I'll show right here. So my Dayglow caravan had an 8 on it, and now I played a 10, so that caravan is now ascending. So I can't play anything lower than a 10 on here. As you see, I have a 6, and I'm trying to play it, and the game wouldn't allow me to do that. However, the one exception to this rule is if you have cards that are the same suit. So for example, if they're both hearts, or both diamonds, clubs, or spades, then you can play those cards on top of each other, no matter if it's ascending or descending. So for example, on my hub caravan, I had a 10, and then I played a 6 of hearts. So normally this would be a descending caravan, and I'd have to play something smaller than a 6, but because I have a 10 of hearts, and it matches my 6 of hearts, I can play this on top of here even though it's reversing the order. Similarly, you can see that I drew the eight of spades and I can play this on top of my 10 of spades even though it's the wrong order and that was enough to let me win the game. Now that I briefly explained how to play caravan, let me show you how you can make the big bucks. The best people to play caravan against are the merchants on that chart I showed earlier like Lacey, Cliff Briscoe, Quartermaster Maze, and Johnson Nash. Now, out of all of them, Lacey is the best person to play against because you can win between four and 5,000 caps from her each time. You can get around 1,500 to 3,000 caps from Cliff and Maze and about 1,000 caps from Johnson Nash. The one exception to the merchants is that they each have a hard cap of five total games that you can play against them, and these games count whether you win or lose, so definitely make sure you win all the games because otherwise you're missing out on a lot of caps. 
And I think Obsidian did this because it would have been a little too overpowered if you could play against these people an infinite number of times and always win thousands of caps. Additionally, the number of caps you can win from the merchants is tied to the amount of caps they have stock in their store. So the best strategy is to play them all when they have recently reset their stock and they have the max amount of caps they can hold. Then you would win, wait three days for them to restock, and you could play them all again. You can also buy stuff from them, which would increase the amount of caps they have, and then win it all back playing Caravan. However, I'm not going to count that in the total winnings I'll discuss right here. So if you win against all of the merchants five times each, you could easily win 20 to 25,000 caps from Lacey, 8 to 10,000 caps from Cliff, 10 to 15,000 from Quartermaster Maze, and 5,000 from Johnson Nash. Now this adds up to easily over 50,000 caps, which is a similar haul to bankrupting all the casinos, which comes out to 51,500 if you count the Atomic Wrangler and the Vicky and Vance Casino. Everyone always likes to talk about how good the casinos are to make early money, but I think it's clear that Caravan is just as good, if not better, because unlike gambling, there are people who you can play Caravan against an infinite number of times and still win a decent number of caps, notably Nobark and Ambassador Crocker. Both of them hold up to 2,000 caps, which means you can play both of them over and over again to consistently win 4,000 caps forever. The only downside to Ambassador Crocker is if you fail the quest Don't Tread on the Bear by not siding with the NCR for the Battle of Hoover Dam, he will disappear forever. So take advantage of Ambassador Crocker early game if you're not doing an NCR playthrough. However, Nobark will never disappear, so you don't have to worry about that. So that's all I have to say about Caravan. Once you build a decent deck, I think it becomes one of the best ways to make money in Fallout New Vegas, and it's pretty fun to play. I wish we had the chance to see what the complete vision for Caravan was supposed to be, but maybe we can remain hopeful that some version of it will return in Fallout 5 or some other Fallout game. I think it would be a nice addition to break up the normal gameplay. Let me know what you all think about Caravan, and if you would like to see it return in a future Fallout game as well. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I hope you all have a great day.